<laughs> the lore room. So many choices. You know, some's better than the others, and it only comes from experience of trying them out, you know. Every bait, you know, until you catch one with it, you don't know how it's going to react, you know, and that's what's nice about trapping. Even after all the years I've trapped, they're still firsts, you know. And this year, I'm going to show you a couple of the firsts. You know, after all the years I've been trapping, first time it's ever happened to me. We're going to go to Pennsylvania. We're going to trap some coyotes out there, and uh, my little girl's going to be with me. And we're going to head on over to Ohio and trap Nate. We've got a lot of numbers over there, so to, in order to have a first out there, it's something really crazy. Stay tuned, the coyote action is going to heat up. Trapping, an art form that has stood the test of time. A heritage built upon hard work, dedication, and pride. Rooted deep with the main goal of conservation. We, as trappers, live this history 365 days a year. With the help of some great friends, along with the love and support of my family, I'm carrying on that tradition. With all the pitfalls that I may encounter, the rewards more than outweigh the costs. Many of the greatest trappers in history have etched their name in time. This is my story. This is my time. This is trapping time. Trapping Time is brought to you by Vapple at VappleProducts.com Jeb's Chokes at Jeb'sChokes.com Blind Turtle at BlindTurtle.net Smokey's Deer Lures at SmokeysDeerLore.com Blackwater Hunting Services at BlackwaterHunting.com Southern Ohio Outfitters at SouthernOhioOutfitters.com Big Game Gut Glove at BigGameGutGlove.com Dakota Line Snares at DakotaLineSnares.com PCS Outdoors at PCSOutdoors.com Duke Trap Company at DukeTraps.com Deep South Trapping Lures at DeepSouthLures.com Webster's Predator Control at Shop.WebstersPredatorControl.com Little Whiskey Girl at LittleWhiskeyGirl.com Wolf Creek Products at WolfCreekProducts.net Southern Snares and Supply at SouthernSnares.com and Console Energy at ConsoleEnergy.com You know, Nate always asks me, when we're trapping in the snow and we're cutting tracks, he's always going, have you ever followed a set of tracks to the trap? And you know what? No. I have never caught a coyote where I've cut his tracks and followed him to the trap until this day in Ohio. Got some fresh tracks here. Had a little bit of snow yesterday, so everything was snowed over, so this is all fresh sign. Anytime you can see that, you know they're, they're working in here. I don't know if it's really a good sign, though, because my statistically, my average on catching them after I see the tracks, following the trap, is usually zero. So I don't get too excited when I see it. They've actually spent some time in here. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Finally, caught one that followed his way to the trap. Boy, he's a mangy looking thing. This trap's been here for probably a week and a half. And wow, this is a bad looking coyote. People wonder why we trap. That's why we trap. He's still capable of killing some deer though. That's a nasty looking coyote right there. Well, we'll get him out of here. He's got it all smelled up pretty good. We'll get him out of here, remake this set. And first time, walk right to the trap. When we come back, we're gonna get out of the truck and see what we got. What do you demand in a quality knife? You want a knife that works as hard as you do. Weeby knives are made for trappers who want efficiency and perfection. The Weeby Elite double-edged fleshing knife has one edge that's ultra sharp. 
and the other side has just the right edge for pushing fat and meat for perfectly fleshed furs. And don't forget about the weeby Wicked Shark, the planet's sharpest skinner. When the blade goes dull, simply snap on a new one, and you're ready to go. Find them at dakotalionsnares.com. Who better to get your trapping supplies from than trappers who know what you need in the field? Come on in! PCS Outdoors is one-stop shopping for name brand trapping, predator hunting and calling supplies, shooting and pest control gear at discount prices. A lure for every animal you'd be targeting. PCS Outdoors stands above the competition. Quality Asabo brand snares being made here in Michigan. Go to PCSOutdoors.com for great selection and prices that'll make you want to stock up for your next trapping or outdoor adventure. There's his tracks, but I call the walk of death. Walk right to there, single set of tracks, walk right in here. We've got two dirt holes set here, and we had about two inches of snow yesterday, and we have had no activity at all at either one of these tracks. And this one here finally hit. Shows right there why you use a good bait, because it just keeps producing the smells. We lured this up, Nate and I come in here. We sat here about a week and a half ago. We have not touched it. Every time we pull in here, we just get discouraged. And we knew it was going to hit sooner or later, and this dog here, he's <coughs> vocal and rough looking. That's a young, young dog, but I tell you what, he's, <coughs> he's in for a hard winter. Now we come in here, and this dog had a little bit of a mess. This is an old reclaimed land, so the dirt around here is a little weird. But it's just a standard dirt hole that I'd made. And he really worked it around and actually blew the dirt hole out of this for us. So we're going to take and get a lot of this garbage here out of here because it's freezing every night and falling out during the day. So we don't want to cause ourselves any more problems. And this is going to be almost like a step down set because now we're a lot deeper. And I found that when they get these blowed out like this, sometimes we have a little more success because they've already got smell here. Um, it really, really shows that something's been in here. So we're gonna try and find our dirt hole. There's our old dirt hole right here. Just to give you a reference, here's the dirt hole. I usually set my trap here. When he yanked this out and spun this earth anchor, it basically acted like a plow and dug it out. So we're gonna take and pull this back out. And anytime you're dealing with this mud, you want to make sure you get all this mud back out of here. We're going to reset this Duke 175, which in my opinion has more than enough trap for an eastern coyote, especially the ones that we're trapping. And I don't have to have as big of a hole to cover it up. Now, he sprung our earth anchor a little bit. So a lot of times when that happens, you're going to end up with a little bit of a cable stuck out so you I'll just pound that down a little bit it's freezing so we want to take a little bit of peat moss it's going to act like our insulator get that in there now we're going to take this trap and we're going to bed that bad boy right there try and get it as solid as you can get it and now because he's got the hole really blowed out we're going to try to make it where he wants to step down into it And don't worry about this color on this because here in about three or four hours, this is going to look as dark and muddy as everything else. So basically our theory is he's going to come in here, try to work this dirt hole, step in here and get caught. And that's a finished set. We'll lure him up and we're ready for, hopefully, we catch another one. I hate the mud. hate it. Take a little Smokies. That's what was in here the first time. Well, that's good looking stuff. And it's a loud, loud beat. And when it's weather's like this, that's what you want. We're gonna take a little bit of his Smokey's Kite Matrix Gland Lure. And we're just gonna dump just a, just a little bit right on. There you go. Oh, now that's great. My bag's gonna smell like gland lure. That's awesome. I guess we'll just wash our fingers before we get to lunch. 
probably just might like it, but I don't like the smell of it at all. All right, lure it up. Let's get this mangy dog out of here, and hopefully we got some more to show everybody. Later on, we're going to show you another first involving a youth trapper, my daughter Peyton. And don't forget about the set of the week. You're watching Trapping Time. Do you need a blind that will keep you warm on a cold winter day? Do you need a blind that won't blow away on a windy fall afternoon? Do you need a blind that will never wear out? If you answered yes to any of these questions, then you need a Blind Turtle Hard Shell Hunting Blind. This solid one-piece unit is perfect for deer hunters, turkey hunters, archery hunters, and gun hunters. Put it this way, if you hunt, the Blind Turtle is perfect for you. Where'd you get all that stuff? DakotaLineSnares.com. I bet it cost you a fortune to ship all that. Nope, not DakotaLineSnares.com. It's $9.95, flat rate. It doesn't matter what you get. Dakota Line Snares and Trapping Products has everything you need right at your fingertips. Our warehouse is packed with trapping supplies you need to be successful on your trap line. And with flat rate shipping of $9.95 on all orders, you get your money's worth. Hey, what are you doing? I'm going to put my order in at DakotaLineSnares.com now. We are infinite. This week's set of the week, we're with my good buddy Nate. Now you know Nate's only been trapping a few years and where did he learn all of his trapping knowledge from? Me. So we're going to follow Nate in Ohio and we're going to see if he's actually paid attention to the teacher. Now not only are Robbie and I hunting buddies, but as you can see, I'm also his editor. Now we've deer and turkey hunted together for years and years and years, but he's just recently, over the last several years, got me involved foothold trapping with him on land for coyotes, canines. I love catching these things. Now as a deer hunter for me, this makes so much sense to take more of these coyotes off my property and Robbie has made it simple for me to learn. Well, I'm out checking my traps again after work and uh, look at the color in this coyote. I'm going to show you something about this set that made it just a little bit different for me and uh, first things first, I'm going to get this coyote dispatched, get it out of this trap. But look at the color in this thing. This is this is what I may just tan and keep for myself. But let me get it dispatched, get it out of the trap, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. You know, the cool thing about this coyote is I caught it in the same spot that Robbie caught that mangy coyote you saw earlier in the show. Robbie's set was just about 90 yards past where this one was. All right, I've got the coyote out of the trap. And I don't know if you can tell or not, but this I finally got my dirt hole found again. I actually made this dirt hole a little bit bigger than I normally would just to get some eye appeal and catch some attention. Got my trap bed dug back out, my trap reset. Now, yesterday, temperatures were in the 40s here, and I had no base for this trap. This was all soup. As you can see, it's still pretty soft. So what I did, and what we're gonna have to do again, is I went around and found some grass. Now, I, when I had the thought, I was thinking, you know, what can I do to line the bottom of this trap to make it stay up. Well, I thought hay might work and I didn't have any hay. So I took the grass that I could find and just made myself a bottom. As you can see, that actually beds pretty nice. It doesn't sink down in the mud and it gives myself a little bit of a bottom for that trap to set solid. So the next thing I'm gonna do is cover this in peat moss. I'm gonna get a couple handfuls and try to spread it on as thin as possible. Now yesterday when I put this in, I had no clue if this was gonna work. I just had to find something to give myself a base for this trap. So I've got plenty of grass around here. So why not try something that's already here that I know could work. Okay, there's my trap. It's set back down in, it's got a nice solid base. It's not gonna wobble if anything comes near it. Get a little bit more bait back in this hole, fluff some of this up where this coyote was, and uh, 
this thing will be ready to go. I can smell where this coyote was in here. So I got plenty of scent here. Who knows, maybe tomorrow we'll catch another one. It seems like we're always dealing with these nasty conditions. Here's another coyote I caught in Ohio. Now this one just looked like another mud monster, but I'll show you another trick that I use to keep my traps dry. As you can see, it warmed up to about 38 degrees today. So it's pretty sloppy here and we've got some blood in our set. So I'm gonna show you a couple things I do to clean all this up. The temperature's gonna get cold again. So I don't want all this in here. Go to any kind of store and get yourself an old soup ladle. What I'll do is I'll just clear all that junk out of there because the only thing that's gonna do is freeze here in the next couple hours. So I'm gonna scrape as much of that out of there as I can before we get started. And try to make my trap bed as dry as possible, which I'm gonna lay a layer of peat moss over top of that, so that's gonna help a little bit, but got about as much out of there as I think I'm gonna get on this one. We're gonna insulate the bottom where this trap's gonna lay. And that's also gonna give you a little bit of soft ground to bed this trap a little bit better. So we got a little bit of soft stuff down there. That trap is actually bedded pretty nice in there. And now, instead of a pan cover or anything like that, I am just gonna take my peat moss, sift it with my hands, right over top of the trap like that. Get it completely, completely covered up. But that's basically how I'm gonna prevent water from getting into my traps. Now it's gonna freeze, and I'm actually probably gonna take a little bit of salt and spread on top of this. Think about it, just like your sidewalk prevents the ice from building up, we'll spread a little salt on top of this, so if this does freeze up, we'll, uh, we'll be in good shape. But another coyote off this farm. Good job, Nate. It looked like somebody might've been paying attention. When we come back, we're gonna take my daughter Peyton out and put her on her first coyote. Smile, look at me how you smile. Cool son, that's a mama. The Big Game Gut Glove is revolutionizing the way big game hunters and trappers are successful in the field. The 26 inch version fits over your elbows and protects you and your expensive hunting clothing from blood or cold water. They're made to fit your hands from extra small to extra large. What I like about them, I can feel with them. Existing products on the market don't give you the feel or protection you need. Wet or dry, the special non-slip grip bonds tightly to whatever you're handling. The Big Game Gut Gloves are reusable so you save money and promote going green. In 2011, the world of shotgun chokes changed forever. Bobby Sears took his Jeb's Headhunter Precision Choke Tube to the NWTF Wild Turkey Still Target National Championships and brought home the gold. Shortly after, the Game On team got on board. By stacking the shot in front of the wad cup inside the choke tube before it exits your gun barrel, Jeb's can extend your effective range way beyond anything you've ever seen. So don't get worked up about a turkey that's just out of range. Ruin his day with a Jeb's Headhunter Choke Tube. The trophy moment only lasts a couple of seconds, but the story will be passed on for generations. They only see the glory, not the sacrifice. But I don't wait for my tall tale of glory. I handcraft my journey from start to finish. They don't see what goes on behind closed doors. An epic saga is worth a thousand words, but my story boils down to three. Little Whiskey Girl. Save luck for the weekend hunter. Well today, we are checking traps and I've got Miss Peyton with me. She was sick today, so she gets to hang out with Daddy today from school. Had a fever and we haven't caught nothing yet. We've only got a few traps out here in PA, so we've got some of the high that we, Nate's gonna check in for me. If we do any good, we're gonna run out there. Usually I run out every day, but she's sick, so we're just gonna kinda hang out here. Is that right, Peyton? Yep. Having fun? Yep. Yep. This is my first time seeing a live coyote. Hopefully we got one. We got something up there. Oh yeah, you're gonna get to see your first coyote, Pete. Awesome. I set these traps about a week ago and it finally hit. I knew it was just a matter of time, so we'll get the stuff out. You're gonna love what she's wearing. She got sparkly boots on. Not your typical trapping gear, but I think we'll be fine. What do you think, Pete? 
All right. Fashion Your fashion designs. All right, let's get this coyote out of this trap. Good. Pretty decent sized dog. I've actually taken four coyotes out of this little area. So. This is right by my house too, so anytime I can get them out of here, I'm tickled to death. This is Peyton's first coyote, so this ought to be interesting. Well, I got my little girl with me today, and uh, first time she's ever seen a coyote in a trap. So it's a pretty special day for me. This young dog looks like he's got a little bit of mange starting, and uh, anytime you can take them out of the gene pool, I mean, there's just getting to be so many coyotes that it's, it's running rampant. But this set here is just your typical Greene County, Pennsylvania set. We don't have the big fields. We've got a decent sized meadow here with a tree line. I took this telephone pole and I put a little bit of call lure on it. And it's just naturally they're gonna work their way to here. I got a dirt hole here and about where the camera's setting, probably eight, 10 feet away, I got a dirt hole there as well. And just buried a 175 Duke in there, setting them close and it worked. Had a little bit of Smokey's Deer Lures uh, Fox and Coyote in here and a little Mountain Rebel Skillet liquor just to add it up and these cold nights get these dogs moving. So we're gonna get this coyote out here, remake the set. Hopefully we catch us another one. The coyote rut's on right now so these dogs are really checking out these other smells and stuff so hopefully we can catch us another one tomorrow. That'd be alright wouldn't it? Yep. Alright let's get it out of here. Got a nice little field here and we got this tree line that's naturally going to bring these coyotes down through these travel ways. Telephone pole here, I use that as my attractor. I'm probably 15 feet away. I'll put a little bit of call lure on it. Now we're going to take and dig this trap bed back out because usually when a coyote, you catch one, he tears some stuff up. All right, we're just going to throw this stuff out of here because I always use peat moss. So I don't need any of that stuff. Make sure your dirt hole is operational. Right there's my smoky bait, right at the top. This dirt hole, when I made it, I couldn't get very deep with the bait. So the bait's right at the top of the ground. It was covered up with a little bit of dirt, but we're good to go. We're gonna take our trap and reset it, which he messed the dog up. Let's see if we can get this straightened out good enough. If we can catch us another. Bend that back in place. Now, let's see if we can get this thing set to where we can catch us another kite right here. Perfect. I want my pan as level as it possibly can be. As you can see, there's not much of any kind of change in it. Get it set there. We're gonna make sure that this bed's good. Gonna reach in. We got freezing and thawing happening. Whether we know the weather's gonna get cold, we're gonna come right back in here. Now I use earth anchors, and a lot of times these coyotes, when they pull that initial time, they'll pull this anchor out and pull the swivel with it. So a lot of times you're bedding your traps, you gotta hurry up, you gotta sometimes put that back down in there. Bed the trap, make sure it's solid. We're gonna cover it back up with peat moss. I cut my trap bed so tight to the size of my trap, I don't really worry too much about packing dirt back around it, especially with the peat moss. But we're just gonna take a little bit, cover it back up. And now, we're gonna take all this grass and stuff. I'm gonna throw it right back here. We've got so much coyotes sent here right now, it's insane, absolutely insane. We want these coyotes, we wanna smell it. There's some droppings. We may even throw that here by the edge of the dirt hole seen another one here thought I did I might be setting it who knows and just kind of pile that up they're calling for a little bit of snow tonight so what will happen is this will give us a little bit of a backing these coyotes are going to be hungry they're going to smell this other coyote smell and it's going to draw them in and that's just a typical remake here in a grassy field I mean this this set here is ready to, ready to go again Fast, quick, and easy, and away we go. We're gonna take and even though there's enough coyote smell here right now, we're gonna give it a little, little shot. We'll do a little Mountain Rebel Fox Potion number nine. Give it a shot there, and we're ready to move on. 
Awesome catch, got to catch it with my daughter. I think that's something she'll always remember. Her mom might not like it too much because she was right beside that coyote, but she'll get over it. But good luck on your line. You know, anytime you can get a kid out in the woods, whether it's trapping, hunting, or fishing, it's an accomplishment. Too many of these kids nowadays, they just want to sit and play video games. You know, my daughter, she's seven years old, and that was the first time she'd ever seen a coyote. Many kids don't get to experience that. I mean, she had a wild animal within feet. Some places she could really observe it and see it in its natural habitat. You know, so anytime you get that chance, take the kids out, get them involved. Trapping's an easy sport. They get hands-on training, and um, they usually got a good chance of seeing a reward of something in a trap. So until next time, we'll be keeping the tradition alive right here on Trapping Time. Remember to set your DVRs every Tuesday at 8.30 on Dish Network Channel 266. And don't forget to like us on Facebook at Trapping Time. I personally am going to list every week the conventions, the events we're going to be at. Also, we're going to be posting videos, anything rela trapping related that's going to make you a better trapper and help fuel your trapping addiction. <laughs> yeah, Jen, she didn't like it too much that Peyton was right there beside that guy. I caught three kinds of grief from that. And of course, by the time you post it on Facebook and everybody gets to see it, I had a hundred different parents telling me, she's too close. And then the grandparents got involved and that's all I'm hearing. So from now on, if Peyton's going to go with me, I got to make sure she's 10 feet behind me. I got a gun. It's not going anywhere.